Hi, this is an introduction to coping skills, and this session is one in a series of six bite-sized information sessions exploring ways of looking after our mental health and well-being. If you have any questions about this session, you can contact us using the details on the screen now. The aim of this information session is to provide a brief introduction to understand what stress is, to recognise that we all have skills to cope with stressful situations, to recognise healthy and unhealthy coping skills, and to raise awareness of healthy coping skills available. So what is stress? Stress is the feeling of being under too much mental or emotional pressure. When you are stressed, your body releases stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. Another definition of stress is that stress is our body's response to pressure. Many different situations or life events can cause stress. It is often triggered when we experience something new unexpected or that threatens our sense of self, or when we feel we have little control over a situation. Stress also refers to person environment transactions in which environmental demands outweigh the individual's resources, resulting in psychological and or physiological dysregulation. And last but not least, situations or events that put pressure on us. For example, times where we have lots to do and think about or don't have much control over what happens or our reaction to being placed under pressure. The feelings we get when we have demands placed on us that we find difficult to cope with. The term fight or flight represents the choices that our ancient ancestors had when faced with danger in their environment. They could either fight or flee. In either case, the physiological and psychological response to stress prepares the body to react to the danger. When we perceive challenging, difficult or dangerous situation, our bodies react by release of stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline, to help us either fight or flight. Those hormones fire up chain of chemical reactions in our bodies and brains to help us manage situation better. No matter if the danger is physical, we need to run away uh, from dangerous animal or psychological when we are speaking in front of a crowd. We all use coping skills to deal with situations that make us feel stressed. And some coping skills might be more helpful than others, and our focus of coping might be different. So what can make us feel stressed? These are a few examples of stressful events that might happen to all of us at some point of our lives, but you will likely be able to think of others that you have experienced in your life. When we look at this list, you might notice that some of the things that cause us stress might not be negative experiences like bereavement or struggles with money. It might also be things we enjoy or want to do, for example, traveling or our relationships. Situations that we find exciting can also bring challenges to our lives and can in turn cause us stress and stretch our ability to cope. We might find it easier to cope with something like a house move than managing a long-term illness, for example, but both situations activate the same reaction in our bodies and both demand us to find a way to cope and proceed with the adaptation and change the situations require from us. Is stress a mental health problem? Stress itself is not a mental health problem, but it is linked with mental health in two ways. Stress can cause us to experience mental health problems. So the normal demands of life feel worse and can be cause of anxiety or depression if we fail to cope. 
And also mental health problems can cause us to experience stress. If we are suffering from mental health problems, managing our condition can be additional source of stress. For example, attending appointments or managing medication. So what are coping strategies then? Terms, coping skills, coping strategies and coping mechanisms are used interchangeably. Main idea is that if something becomes too much for us, we use some of the skills we have to adapt and maintain our well-being. We all know that life challenges us daily and we constantly need to adapt in many ways to keep up and meet the demands of other people and environment. Coping skills are mechanisms that help us either change situation or adapt to something we cannot change. When we are faced with pressure, it is good to have a sense of what kind of coping skills we might need. Problem-based coping skills are useful when we need to change the situation we are in. Sometimes the only way to cope and move past the issue is removing the stressor from our life. For example, if someone is in a relationship which is no longer working, the healthiest way to cope with the feelings of stress this is causing might be to end the relationship. In this case, we would probably need more problem-based skills, at least at the start, to find somewhere else to live, to move our belongings and resolve other practicalities. Emotion-focused coping skills are useful when we don't want to change our situation or we don't have control over changing it. For example, if we lose someone, it's good to take care of our feelings because we can't change the circumstance. Most of the time, dealing with stressful and challenging situations demand a mix of both. There are times when we need to take care of practicalities and times when we need to take care of our emotions to cope effectively. Problem-focused coping targets the causes of stress in practical ways, which tackles the problem or stressful situation that is causing stress, which directly reduces the stress itself. All strategies that aim to resolve the problem are problem-based strategies. In order to remove the stressful element in our lives, we might need to create a plan, find a way to look after ourselves differently, find a new source of income or change our approach. This is a proactive way of managing stress that actively looks at solving the problem instead of avoiding it. Emotion-focused coping is a type of stress management that attempts to reduce negative emotional responses associated with stress. It's important to acknowledge that despite the fact that emotion-focused coping skills are aimed at helping to manage our feelings, they can be still proactive and involve us changing our behaviours. It's also important to mention that even though we might occasionally distract ourselves from difficult feelings, coping with our emotions shouldn't constantly distract us from the reality. Some examples of help for coping mechanisms, seeking support, relaxation, humor, physical activity, getting enough sleep, enjoying nature. Proactive coping is a way of managing obstacles you might face. It usually includes creating a plan ahead for how you're going to cope with something. It might include both emotional and practical aspect of our life. Here we listed other coping mechanisms that you might be using. Not all of the coping skills are helping us in developing supportive lifestyle. If you find yourself making use of any of these, it is helpful to recognize this about yourself 
and begin to think if you can make small changes to try some of the other techniques we've suggested. It might be useful to speak to your GP or mental health practitioner how you can better support yourself in dealing with stresses of everyday life. How much stress is too much? Tolerance for stress depends on the person and the situation. Every one of us is different and what one person finds stressful, another might not. If you are able to have a good network of people around you that you can count on when things are difficult, it's possible that life challenges might feel less overwhelming. Your ability to cope also depends on your sense of control. People who don't believe that they have any control over their lives can often struggle more with life challenges than those who believe that they can and do have an influence in their circumstances. It also depends on your attitude and outlook. Some people are able to cope well despite what we might perceive to be very challenging situations because they have a belief in a greater purpose and are able to use this to find ways of accepting and coping with challenges. Knowledge on how to soothe yourself and deal with difficult emotions might be huge help in bouncing back from adversity. The more you know about a stressful situation, the better, because it's easier to cope when you know what to expect. So how to develop coping skills which can help? Six ways to be well as a self-help and signposting resource for mental well-being based on the New Economics Foundation framework, Five Ways to Well-Being. This is a set of well-evidenced, action-based ideas for improving personal well-being. An additional theme, nurture, was added following local consultation in the Scottish borders. So the six ways to be well. Nurture, be active, belong, be kind, enjoy and learn, and be aware. Nurture yourself and people around you. Give yourself some time, care and protection, and try to make some time to relax and have fun. It might be also good to set up the routine that will help you sleep well and eat well. Be active. A regular exercise can lift up your mood and be a healthy distraction from worries. It's important to find an activity that you enjoy and it suits your mobility and abilities. Bringing enjoyable activity into your life can really make a difference. We often forget that stress is just an energy that needs physical release. Belong. Connecting with others is a very important part of coping with stress. It can provide both emotional and also practical help. Strong sense of belonging to the community help with our well-being. Without that, we might not be aware that support is there. Be kind. Giving and receiving not only help to build a supportive network, but also enhance our well-being. Have you ever exchanged smile with a stranger without any reason? If yes, how does it feel? Enjoy and learn. Learning gives us not only new skills, but also sense of identity and joy. Try to find something that you might feel interested in doing and learn more. Maybe thanks to that, you'll meet new friends that share your interests and want to learn something too. It can be something as simple as trying new recipe, taking different responsibility at work, anything that keeps your mind busy and involved. Be aware, our lives are so busy that we forget to pay attention what is around us. Did you ever have a feeling of relaxation when lying in the sun or feeling the breeze of the sea? And try to make yourself aware of little things in life that will bring you to the present moment. Dive into curiosity when walking in the forest or feel the warmth of the water while taking a shower. Live your life in the only moment you truly have now.
This slide provides some information about grounding techniques you might want to try. In order to ground yourself in reality, you can try to notice five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can smell, two things you can touch, and one thing you can taste. If you want to ground yourself in the breath to activate soothing response of your nervous system, try to make your exhale longer. So take a breath for four and exhale for eight, or take a breath in for two and exhale for four, and try to keep one to two ratio. If you want to ground yourself in your body, if you are sitting, try to really feel the support of your chair, or if you are standing, feel the sensation of your feet touching the bottom of your shoes and then the ground. Another way of grounding yourself might be changing the temperature of your body. So you can splash your face with the cold water or hold ice cube in your hand. All of those techniques are aiming to bring us back to the present moment. When we feel stressed or overwhelmed, it's important to remember that this is only our brain that is trying to keep us safe by firing up fight and flight response and cutting us off from our rational brain. When we are scared and out of control, we are trying to find solution or desperately trying to get back control over our bodies and thoughts. Our mind is not always available because of fight and fight, flight response and adrenaline that is pumped into our veins. It's important to bring frontal lobes back online and bring back our ability to think clearly in order to solve the problem. Those techniques can be used to calm ourselves down and soothe our nervous system. And it's important to remember that it may take some time before we'll be able to do it with ease. And here we have some examples of techniques that might help when problem solving. For example, putting things into different perspective. We might think, what would fly on the wall say? What are different ways of looking at the situation? Would it matter in five weeks, five months or five years? When deciding the solution, what we can do is writing your solutions on a separate pieces of paper and putting them in a different angles of the room or different rooms in a flat. And now you can go there, stand on the sheet with solution and try to imagine how would it be if you had chosen this? What do you feel, think, what are you wearing, where do you live, chosen this? And you can think whether you're happy with the decision or not. Good or listing advantages and disadvantages uh, of your choice might also be a um, problem solving technique. Or you can think about future self, uh, try to imagine your future self, someone you are striving to be. What would he or she say about the choices you want to make and how would he or she deal with the situation? Does your ways of coping support becoming your higher self? Sometimes when we are stressed despite fairly successful coping with overwhelming response of our nervous system, we can still feel the impact of emotions on our thinking. It is important to acknowledge that it might be really hard to cope with difficult situation when we are struggling with foggy mind. So basically, here are some ideas how to put things in a different perspective and bring some creativity into problem solving. And using those might help you to see the situation from a different angle that you used to and might bring some fresh insight into what is happening for you. So in order to cope with difficult emotions when you have limited control over situation, Try to take some time to really feel what is happening for you. Acknowledge the weight of whatever you're going through. And this is how you might try to accept what is happening. You can also take your feeling for a walk 
uh, walking out of your house can be a good way to stay with a feeling while being in the move because you are not stuck and paralyzed by what you feel. You are still alive and able to make choices about your life. Imagine dealing with the problem. So imagine dealing successfully with the problem and all feelings it evokes. Affirmations. Our minds believe in what we are telling ourselves. Uh, affirmations are not about lying to yourself. Affirmations are something that you might want to say to yourself to evoke hope, something that has a deeper meaning for you and your life. Something, for example, um, like despite the struggle, I am safe or uh, I've got this. Um, you'll be amazed how important it is to, to back yourself up in whatever you're going through. Um, and you can also take a break. It's okay to keep your mind off from negative emotions. So you can go for a bike, do some gardening or engage in meaningful and enjoyable activity to lift your mood up a bit. So here are some useful contacts. Um, the Samaritans Breathing Space Shout NHS24. Samaritans provides confidential emotional support for people experiencing feelings of distress or despair, um, including those which could lead to suicide. Uh, calls are free. Breathing Space is a free confidential helpline for anyone experiencing low mood, anxiety or depression or who's unusually worried and needs someone to talk to. We have provided some useful resources here which can be accessed by clicking on the links in the description below this video. The first resource is the NHS Borders Mental Health Pathway document. This details uh, all of the different services uh, you can access within the Scottish Borders for support with your mental health and well-being. We have also shared the NHS Borders Six Ways to Be Well resources and a link to the NHS Borders Wellbeing Point, which includes information about getting help in a crisis, uh, about our local mental health services in the borders and about the six ways to be well. If you do want some one-to-one -one support to make a change to your well-being, then there is also a link on the well-being point to make an appointment with an NHS Borders Wellbeing Advisor. Thank you for watching. Uh, this video is funded by the Scottish Borders Joint Health Improvement Team Programme, United to Prevent Suicide.